Welcome to the ninth episode of the CDP4 movie series. So today we're going to talk about options. Um, and the easiest way to explain what uh, options are and what they're used for is to show you in, in a model. So the first thing we'll do is connect to a CDP4 server with our known username and password. I open a session, then I open a model system engineer and then I open the element definitions uh, browser and the product tree browser so what you see here is all the building blocks that I can use with different ownerships that have parameters associated to them and here in the product tree browser on the right I see my fully exploded or expanded uh, architecture um, and what you can notice is that on the title of the tab, it is called option one. And also in the header, this is the um, explicit tree or the product tree for option one. What you typically do in concurrent design or when you're doing architecting is you try to come up with different architectures for the same problem that you're trying to solve. So let's assume that this space mission is a mission to the moon um, and that we've been requested to uh, identify that for this mission it is better to use chemical propulsion versus electrical propulsion where we know that in a chemical propulsion situation we'll get there relatively fast and that with electrical propulsion it'll take a bit longer but let's make the assumption that we think that with electrical propulsion uh, the total mass of our spacecraft of our satellite will be a bit lower so there are ups and downsides to both ways of doing things and it depends a bit on what you want to achieve uh, with this lunar mission whether it makes sense to do one or the other now instead of having to redo a complete model or to make two models at the same time and having to maintain them side by side cdp4 is conceived uh, in such a way that you can actually do uh, optioneering uh, in one model so you can create multiple options inside of one model so what i'll do is i'll go to the options tab to first of all change the name of my existing option and when you create a new model it will always contain at least one option but I'm going to change the name of this option to make it explicit what this option is all about so I'm going to say that this is the chemical option chemical propulsion is a better name propulsion I'm also going to make it the default option. And then I'm going to create a new option, which is called electrical propulsion. So now I have two options. So I'm going to close this window to save some screen real estate. And you see that if I navigate to the product tree button on the, on the model tab, I now have an extra option listed here. So I have my chemical propulsion option and my electrical propulsion option, and I can open them up side by side. So I'll just move this window here, make a new vertical tab group so we can look at them side by side. And since we haven't done anything apart from creating a new option, there is no difference between the two. But let's assume um, that we are going to create that difference. And the first difference would be the fact that you have two different kinds of engines. So let's do that first. We create an element definition called um, uh, chemical propulsion engine. Chemical engine. And it's owned by propulsion, of course. And I'm going to add a electrical engine. So that is going to be electrical propulsion engine and again I'm going to set the ownership to propulsion so now I have these two building blocks of course they have mass so I'm going to add the mass parameter to them and mind you I'm doing this work on behalf of the chemical propulsion engineer while I'm actually logged in as system engineer so I have to do a bit of extra work to 
change the ownership of these items. And typically, this would be done while you're logged in as the propulsion engineer so that you don't have to do this work, the TDP core does that for you. But now we're in a situation that would be rather typical. So we have two new building blocks uh, with those parameters added. And also for the sake of the demonstration, I'm going to say that I have a chemical engine, which has a mass of 20 kilograms and an electrical engine that has a mass of 10 kilograms. So we can see that there's a difference already between the two. Um, just to make sure that the data is visible, I'm going to immediately publish those values. So all the data is there. So what you see now is that in my option one and in my option two, I don't have these engines yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the chemical engine to my satellite. I'm also going to add the electrical engine to my satellite. And just to be precise, I'm also going to change the ownership of these usages. And again, that's not something that you would have to do when you've logged on as the propulsion engineer. So now we have those two building blocks added, and they are also both added to the product tree. Of course, that's not what we want. We want them to be, uh, let's say, different, the two options. And now we actually go into the details of why this way of implicit modeling is such a good idea. And this is the reason. It, is it, it, is the, it gives you the option, first of all, to reuse components. So you saw that I only had to define the battery once, and I could use it multiple times. So this we, building block we call an element definition. And when it's contained inside of another element definition, it becomes a usage. So it's battery one of type battery, chemical engine of type chemical engine, and so on and so forth. And what I can do now is I can tell the CDP that um, that usage is either part of an option or not. So I can click on that little pin mark here, that pin button, and I can say the chemical engine is in the chemical propulsion option, of course, but not in the other one. So you saw that it disappeared here, and I can do a similar thing to the electrical engine. I'm going to say it is not a part of the chemical propulsion, but it is a part of the electrical propulsion. And now I'm going to make sure that I have that right. So yeah, that's all in order. So now we have two different options. So the chemical option, and you see again here, on the product tree that this is called chemical. And here you see that it's called electrical. Here we have an electrical engine and here we have a chemical engine. And the only thing I had to do was make it explicit that one was part of, let's say option one and the other one was part of option two. So that's how easy it is to start making a difference between uh, two different solutions for the same problem. In this case, designing a space mission to go to the moon. And the only thing I had to do was add building block. Well, I first define them, add parameters to them, add them to the building block that they belong to or let's say owned by or composed of and then tell CDP that the chemical engine is included or excluded from one or the other option and that's how easy it is so if I would go to Excel right now and show you um, how that works in Excel I have the same Excel spreadsheet still I'm going to log on to the same server and what you'll see is that the CDP, when I say rebuild, will generate an option sheet for each of the options that exist in the model. So I'm going to open up that same uh, model here. Give it some time to load, and then I say rebuild. So I'm going to rebuild the data into this workbook. <clears throat> And then it's actually telling me that I've changed something in the workbook and whether I want to keep those changes or not. For now, I will say override. So never mind about what I did in the past. Just continue with what we're doing. And what you see now is that I have an EP option and a CP option. It still has option one. Uh, so that one I can safely remove. And now you see that I have a breakdown for um, both uh, options. And what you see here is that in this spreadsheet, 
I only have those items listed that, let's say, only those parameters that are owned by me, so I can make the distinction between the two. So now I can uh, use that parameter on a spreadsheet. And in this case, I only have the mass, so that's not very useful. But at least you uh, sort of get the idea of the two different options. Here I have the electrical engine listed, and here I have the chemical engine listed. So if I go to the Elman Definition Browser, let's let it load, and then I'm going to create a um, subscription to the mass. And mind you, we saw that in a previous video. But there we did it from the desktop app and not from the Excel editor. So now I have those two um, parameters that I've subscribed to. So if I now rebuild the sheet, you will see that in my electrical propulsion option, I have the mass of the electrical engine listed with a value of 10 kilograms. And then on the chemical propulsion option, I have the, the chemical engine with a mass of 20 kilograms. So now you see how easy it is to make option variants with CDP4 uh, while you're actually managing the same building blocks. Uh, and I'm going to demonstrate one more thing uh, because I think that when I design a system that has uh, a chemical uh, propulsion uh, based uh, system that I need only two batteries, but when I do it uh, for electrical, I need at least a third battery. I'm going to call this battery three. And of course, it's owned by propulsion. And, and then I'm going to say battery three is only a part of the electrical propulsion solution. So if I now rebuild that sheet again, You see that I have, um, in my electrical propulsion option, I have three batteries, and in the chemical, only two. And if I now subscribe to the battery mass, and I rebuild again, you'll see that I have, for each of those options, I have also the battery mass listed. So if I were to do another mass budget, you can already see that they would have a totally different mass. Thank you for watching. I hope that made it clear and uh, see you next time. Bye.